Aladdin and the Magic Lamp Long time ago in China, there lived a poor boy, whose name was Aladdin. Aladdin lived with his mother. One day a rich and distinguished-looking man came to their house and said to Aladdin's mother, I am a merchant from Arabia and want your son to come with me. I will reward him handsomely. Aladdin's mother instantly agreed. Little did she know that the man pretending to be a rich merchant was in reality a magician. Next day, Aladdin having packed his belongings left with the merchant. After many hours of traveling the merchant stopped. Aladdin too stopped, surprised that they should stop in such a desolate spot. He looked around, there was nothing in sight for miles. The merchant pulled out some colored powder from his pocket and threw in the ground. The next instant the whole place was filled with smoke. As the smoke cleared, Aladdin saw a huge opening in the ground, it was a cave. The merchant turned to Aladdin and said, I want you to go inside this cave, there will be more gold than you have ever seen, take as much as you want. You will also see an old lamp. Please bring that back to me. Here, take this ring, it will help you. Aladdin was very suspicious but the decided to do as was told. He lowered himself into the cave, thinking all the while that it would be difficult to climb out without help. Aladdin entered the cave and just like the merchant had said saw gold, jewelry, diamonds and other valuables. He filled his pockets. When this was done, he looked for the lamp, it was lying in the corner, full of dust and dirty. He picked it up and ran to the cave's opening and shouted to the merchant, I have your lamp. Can you please pull me out? Give me the lamp, said the merchant. Aladdin was not sure that he would be pulled out if he gave back the lamp, so he said, first, please pull me out. Aladdin and the genie this angered the merchant. With a loud cry, he pulled out the same colorful powder and threw it on the cave opening, sealing it with a huge boulder. Aladdin was depressed. He thought, that was no rich merchant, he was surely a magician. I wonder why this lamp was so important to him. As he was thinking he rubbed the lamp. All of sudden a strange mist filled the room and from the mist emerged a stranger looking man. He said, My master, I am the genie of the lamp, you have rescued me, what would your wish be? Aladdin was scared but he said in quivering voice, Ta! Take me back home. And the next moment Aladdin was home hugging his mother. He told her of the magician and the lamp. Aladdin again summoned the genie. This time when the genie appeared he was not scared. He said, Genie, I want a palace, not an old hut. Again to Aladdin and his mother's amazement in front of them was a magnificent palace. Time passed. Aladdin married the Sultan's daughter and was very happy. It so happened that the evil magician got to know of Aladdin's good fortune. He came by Aladdin's palace pretending to exchange old lamps for new. The princess, Aladdin's wife, not knowing the value of the lamp to Aladdin called out to the magician to wait. As soon as the magician saw the lamp he grabbed it from the princess hand and rubbed it. The genie appeared. You are my master and your wish is my command, he said to the magician. Take Aladdin's palace to the great desert far away from here, ordered the magician. When Aladdin came home, there was no palace and no princess. He guessed it must be the evil magician who had came to take revenge on him. All was not lost, Aladdin had a ring that the magician had given to him. Aladdin pulled out that ring, rubbed it. Another genie appeared. Aladdin said, 
Take me to my princess. Soon, Aladdin was in Arabia with his princess. He found his lamp lying on a table next to the magician. Before the magician could react, Aladdin jumped for the lamp and got hold of it. As soon as he had the lamp, Aladdin rubbed it. The genie appeared again and said, My master, Aladdin, it is indeed good to serve you again. What is it that you wish? I want you to send this magician to another world so that he never harms anybody, said Aladdin. Aladdin's wish was carried out, the evil magician disappeared forever. The genie carried Aladdin, the princes and the palace back to China. He stayed with Aladdin for the rest of his life. Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves Ali Baba, a poor woodcutter, had a rich brother, Kazim, who never shared any of his money with his brother. Instead, he treated Ali Baba, his wife and son badly. One day, as Ali Baba finished cutting logs in the forest, he saw lots of men on horses and he hid. He climbed up a tree and watched the forty horsemen. The men had saddlebags full of gold and they took them to a big rock. One of the men cried, Open, sesame, and a door in the rock opened and the man entered the cave. The others followed. After a while they came out and the leader cried, Close, sesame. When the thieves left, Ali Baba walked to the entrance of the cave. He said the magic words and entered. He was amazed by all the gold, silk, jewels and gold crowns piled up. Feeling it was all right to steal from thieves, Ali Baba decided to take some gold home for himself and his family. When he got home, he showed the gold to his wife. His wife wanted to know how much gold they had. She went to Kazim's house to borrow his wife's scales so she could weigh the gold. She did not want Kazim and his wife to know about the gold, so she said they were weighing meat. Kazim's wife did not believe Ali Baba's wife and wondered where they could have got the money to buy meat. She tricked Ali Baba's wife by putting honey in the bottom of one of the pans. When Ali Baba's wife returned the scales the next day, a gold coin was stuck to the honey. Kazim's wife knew their secret. When she told Kazim about his brother's gold, he was jealous. He went to Ali Baba's house and asked his brother where he got it. When Ali Baba saw the gold coin, he told his brother about the cave and the forty thieves. The next morning, Kazim went to the cave with ten donkeys carrying ten huge chests. He got inside by saying the password but he forgot the magic words to get back out. The thieves found him inside and killed him. When Kazim did not come back, Ali Baba went to look for him. He found his brother's body hanging inside the cave and brought the body home. With the help of Marjanet Kazim's servant girl, they gave Kazim a good burial without anybody wondering about the cause of his death. The thieves found that the body had gone and soon realized that somebody else must know their secret. They set out to look for him in town. They came up with many plans to find the man. However, each time their plans were foiled by the clever Marginet. The thieves eventually found the house of the man they were looking for. They did not know his name, Ali Baba. The leader of the thieves made a plan to kill the man who had stolen from them. He bought twenty donkeys and forty large clay oil jars with loose lids. He loaded the donkeys with two jars each and filled one jar with oil. 
he told his 39 men to take their swords and daggers and to hide inside the jars. He gave them orders to be ready to jump out and attack the man who stole from them. The leader filled the 40th jar with oil. He then went to Ali Baba's house, pretending to be an oil merchant in need of a bed for the night. Ali Baba gave him food and a bed and a stable for his donkeys. The thief left his 40 jars in a long row in the courtyard. Marjana discovered his plan and killed all 39 men by pouring boiling oil on them. When the leader came to find why his men were not ready to fight, he saw they were all dead and he ran away. A few weeks later the leader of the thieves went back to the town, disguised as a merchant. He soon became friends with Ali Baba's son, Khalid, who took him home for dinner. Ali Baba invited him inside, but Marjana soon grew suspicious of the man. After dinner, Marjana performed a dance with daggers to entertain the guest. As she finished, she raised her dagger and killed the dinner guest. All forty thieves were dead and Ali Baba and his family were safe once and for all. Ali Baba was so impressed with Marjana that he offered his son to her for her husband. Khalid happily married Marjana and they had a baby. Ali Baba decided to show Khalid the cave with the treasure. Khalid promised that he, too, would show his son the cave when he was old enough. And so Ali Baba and his family were never poor again.